I think that taking some of the heat off of ourselves to curate every single marketing moment um, will allow you to actually step into your greatness and showcase the very thing that people are going to love about you. Welcome to the Agents of Change podcast, the podcast for today's digital marketer with your host, Rich Brooks, and the Agents of Change, Search, Social, and Mobile. Hey, everybody, this is Rich Brooks, and you are listening to the Agents of Change podcast, the podcast for people just like you, people who are looking to reach more of their ideal customers through search, social, and mobile marketing. We're up to episode 240, and as always, powered by Flight New Media. Live video was huge a couple years ago, and Facebook was putting a big emphasis behind it. In fact, if you wanted to reach a wider audience, basically all you need to do is jump on Facebook and do a live video, and and they would bring you an audience. Things have since settled down, and, and there are more platforms than just Facebook for sure for doing live video, including Instagram and Snapchat and, and Twitter uh, and Periscope, which is really Twitter. Um, and so the question becomes, should we really be focusing on video? If there's not as much emphasis from Facebook, is there still a place for live video in your digital marketing? And according to Nicole Walters, the answer is an absolute 100% yes, but maybe not in the way we first thought about it. So she has an approach to using her live video to engage her audience and kind of bring them down the sales funnel and, and even sell to them right within those live videos. Definitely an interesting conversation. She's also known kind of as the monetization queen, and so we had some really interesting questions at the beginning of the conversation all about, you know, are you giving away too much for free, and what to do when people say, can I pick your brain, which is one of my least favorite sayings ever, by the way, but that's a whole nother story. Anyway, she's going to help you break that habit, and she's also going to teach you or share with you how you can use live video in your marketing. We'll get to that in just a sec. Before we do, though, I just wanted to share kind of a personal story that leads into some of this digital marketing stuff that we're talking about. So I'm planning, I'm taking a sabbatical this summer. Can't remember if I shared that, but I'm taking a month off from my work to go travel around the United States with my two daughters. I got a pop-up camper. We're going to be traveling all around. And so last night was the first night we really sat down and started fleshing out a lot of the trip. And one of the things I noticed is I wanted to schedule a a few different places we were going to stop and and campgrounds we were going to stay at. And no matter how good the reviews were for the campground, if I had to call to make a reservation, I just moved on to the next place. In other words, I didn't, I mean, I care how nice the campground is. Don't, don't let me pretend otherwise, but I wanted to self-serve. And I bring this up because recently a company came to Flight New Media and wanted some help with their SEO. They had been very successful for the longest time. They were had early adopter when it came to websites, but they really hadn't made much in the way of change. And then recently they switched all of their stuff from a HTML website to WordPress, which usually is a good idea. But sometimes it makes Google take a longer look at you compared to your competitors. I've seen this happen a few times. And you get pinged. And the problem is, is they really hadn't updated their website or their messaging or anything else. And this, in in fact, was a real estate website. And you couldn't even check out the MLS listings. You, You actually had to request them to get back in touch with you. And so, of course, there just there wasn't a lot of convergence going on. Meanwhile, the competitors had invested heavily in some really nice video on the home page with a simple search box that just said, you know, where would you like to live or something along those lines. It was night and day experience. And I bring this up because no matter how hard you're working on your SEO or your social media or your digital ads, if you're not creating a website that is up to date, that has, uh, that is up to date with your competitors and up to date with the expectations of your customers, especially in those self service markets. It doesn't matter because you're going to lose. What you need to do is make sure that your website is meeting or more likely exceeding the expectations of your site visitors. If you plan on competing in today's internet, I just, I throw that out there. I'm going to get off my soapbox right now. And, uh, But I I think this is important, and I think too many of us who are into marketing spend so much time off-site and not enough time on-site that we're really missing out on some opportunities. Okay, that's it for now. Let's go check out that interview with Nicole.
Nicole Walters is a former six-figure corporate executive who woke up every morning feeling stuck in the life that she had built for herself. Using her corporate skills, she took to the internet and built a multi-seven-figure business showing others how they can build a life they love. As a child of immigrant parents, Nicole learned that nothing good in life comes easy. Through hard work and building great relationships, anything is possible. This mindset allowed Nicole to start with a humble blog and grow it into the successful business it is today. Nicole has had numerous viral videos that garnished over 30 million views talking about the real life struggles of being a mom. These videos have been featured on the Today Show, Good Morning America, Entrepreneur, Women's Day, Forbes, and Disney's news source, Babbel. Every day, Nicole connects with her audience on how to run an online business and live a life that brings them joy. Nicole, welcome to the show. Thank you, Rich. That bio makes me feel fancier than I'm feeling today. So <laughs> I, that's awesome. I'm sure you're super fancy. Don't you? Don't you even try and try and pretend <laughs> that you're not super fancy. I'm a mom. Listen, I haven't showered today. I've had calls. Like it's what it is. <laughs> I See, live it. And we were just talking about uh, the Super Bowl right before we started recording this, oh. and I just shaved off my playoff beard. I hadn't shaved in over a month, and I was so happy to finally shave and shower today. Uh, I love the commitment from Pats fans. I mean, yeah. You guys are like, we're in it with you. We will not shave. Exactly. Like, I love that. <laughs> I let my legs go, too, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> yes. So, so what was it like waking up and feeling stuck in your life and how did you shift into a more entrepreneurial lifestyle? What were those first tentative steps like? Sure. So I think that for a lot of people, when they talk about feeling stuck, they actually talk about, gosh, I had to go into work or my boss put one more giant file on or he asked me to stay late another day. And you know what? It was different for me. I actually was really proud of the work that I did. I, my parents, they come from humble beginnings. You know, they were laborers. And to have a job with, you know, the corner office and the business cards and the first class flight flights and all those things. I mean, I had a job that was great. It was really came down to the fact that I knew that I wasn't using my best skills and I wasn't living in my God-given purpose. And that was the the turning point where I said, I've got more to offer and what's that going to look like? I got to start doing the work. So uh, those first steps really came with experimenting, uh, maximizing on those after hour timeframes and testing products, uh, putting up blog posts, going live and just doing some idea validation to see kind of what the market was willing to bear and where I could serve best. All right. Now, you've grown your presence online, we were talking about in the bio. In, during that time, you often talk about monetization. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? So it's funny in my community. Uh, it's a running joke that I don't do free, that I'm allergic to free. Free makes me itch. It's just, you know, it's one of those things where I uh, believe in monetizing wherever you can monetize. Now, of course, that doesn't include charity or for children or things like that, but it means recognizing your value and your worth. So monetizing for me is uh, if I'm working with brands, recognizing that they're paying me the same way that they would pay an advertiser if I'm doing something for influencing. Uh, free also means that, you know, if I'm getting booked for a speaking engagement, I'm going to take the time out, making sure that I'm billing properly, not undercharging for the services that I offer. Because what I do know is no matter whom I work with, I am going to deliver my very best and it's going to see a return on that investment. So I charge. And how do you think that other people can keep that in mind? Because I mean, we live in this social media world sometimes and it seems like everything is free. So mm -hmm. how do you talk to people about maybe billing what they're worth or rethinking what they're doing? Like, what does that look like? Well, I mean, some of it's just math, right? You know, so I think that a lot of us have a tendency when it comes to pricing to say, well, what are people willing to pay? And that is a valid question when it comes to any pricing model. But the truth of the matter is, before you get there, you got to start with what were your cost in order to create it? And, um, and that's the first piece of it. Are you hiring vendors? Are you outsourcing? Are you pulling materials from shelves and going to your local boutique and getting that special custom shea butter for your lucky cream? So, I mean, if that's where you're starting, well, there costs that go into it. And then the other part that creators and business owners often forget is your labor. That's where we devalue ourselves the most. But you know what? I remember that anytime I take three hours to put into my business, that's three hours I'm also taking away from my family and from my self-care and from making sure that I'm doing other things I could, you know, see investments as well. So I have to charge for that time also. So when you add your cost of supplies and you add your cost of labor, and then you throw in a little margin, you know, 30% or more to make sure 
sure that you're able to grow and invest and save, well, you actually have a number that's right on the money with what you should be charging. And it usually isn't just whatever you think people are willing to pay. Mm. Now, I've had a lot of people on the show over the years and uh, some of our mutual friends, people like Pat Flynn and Mm -hmm. Amy Porterfield and a lot of people who are in the digital marketing sphere, they give away a lot. I mean, they give a lot of stuff away for free. Are you suggesting that's wrong or what? where does marketing end and maybe your your selling begin? Well, I think that what needs to happen is I think that we probably need to be a little more candid about the fact that it's never really free, right? It's an exchange. They're giving away extremely high value and beneficial products in exchange for your email address, in exchange for a relationship where eventually it'll become a monetary one. So when I look at what Pat does and Amy and what they do so, so well is they give great high value information away on the front end for a simple exchange from your email and permission in order to interact interact with you and eventually offer you something else that you may need as you start that journey with them. So that's what I mean by free. I think that we have a tendency to get onto social media and curate these beautiful social media platforms and we never have a call to action or send people to a place where they can then deposit money in our bank accounts. So so don't do free. Keep in mind what is the end goal so I can get paid. Is this what you mean by marketing with intention? Absolutely. You have to know where you're sending people from the moment that you start interacting with them. So what are some of the, you know, you have these groups that you, that you lead. What are some of the recommendations that you offer to people that might be, they want to grow their list, they want to make money, but they're not really sure how to go about it. What are some of the things that you kind of point them to, to make sure that they're valuing their time and also covering all their costs? Absolutely. So one of the first things that I always do is I tell people, hey, you know, set up your back end, make sure you have a place to send people, build a place for them to go. So whether that is something as simple as a basic landing page where you can just collect email addresses or something wider, like a full on website where you've got tools and courses and various products that they can engage in, uh, you've got to have a place to send people because the most important part to get people onto that list is engaging them, getting out there. Uh, People don't know how to pay you if they can't find you. And what works best for me is live streaming. It's the hot new thing. It's a great way to build that no trust and like factor that people need before they can actually commit to investing in you and investing in themselves and just getting out there and offering that teaching live to them so that that way they can come back and um, interact with your paid products. So tell me a little bit more about this live streaming that and how you're using it to kind of build this audience of yours. Absolutely. So I use this uh, method that I've trademarked called the turbo opt-in method. And uh, we've all heard of traditional opt-ins. Um, you know, opt-ins are something that even if you aren't in the digital marketing space, you've probably seen it. You've been on Target's website and they've popped up on your screen. Sign up now for a 15% coupon, uh, you know, enter your email and we'll stay in touch. Uh, that's an opt-in. And everyday people use them in their online marketing businesses to collect email addresses so they can eventually sell you something as well. And And uh, I kind of decided to bypass some of that process because, frankly, I'm impatient and also because I wanted to leverage the fact that I engage with people very well over video. So the way that the turbo opt-in method works is you hop on the Internet. You've already built your back end, meaning you already have a place to send them. You already know where you're sending um, them to go buy something, whether it's a product or a course or some other small introductory item. And you go on live and you offer the value right up front instead of getting their email address and then offering the value in little bits and drips through emails like, hey, sign up here and check this out and do this project. I do all that stuff up front. You come in and you tune into one of my live broadcasts. You showed up there because you followed a hashtag or a friend shared it. And while you're there, I tell you, hey, this is what you could do today to start building the life of your dreams tomorrow. And then when they're done, I tell them, if you'd like to continue this journey, if you want to be part of this transformation, head over to NicoleWalters.tv where I've got this variety of products or oftentimes I'll point them to a specific product and um, and purchase now. And then sometimes I even offer a coupon code because they're on live. And what happens is I immediately garner revenue from every single live broadcast I do, as well as building that trust and relationship that will continue them in that transformation journey within my business. And when you say generate revenue, you're literally selling to them while they're watching you. I mean, they, they might need right. the video to go to go take care of the action. But but it's not just like you're just getting email subscriptions that may lead to sales. You're saying it's like, no, I'm actually closing sales while I'm doing these live videos. 
Absolutely. Just like an infomercial. They are popping on there and I'm saying, hey, we're doing this great thing. If you'd like to hit the journey, go ahead, go over here. Um, if it's in the middle of a launch, I'll even throw in a little bit of urgency and say, hey, you know, there's a bonus right now for those of you guys who sign up within the next hour. Um, if you decide to wait until later, you still have the opportunity, but you'll miss out on this, this and this. And then I'll walk them right through the purchase. Head over to this site. You'll see this on the page. Enter your information here. Next, you'll see in your inbox your link and then you can log in and get started. I even even encourage them to uh, log into the content and then come back to the live broadcast and share what they're seeing so that people who haven't made the purchase yet are excited and and they get that sort of fear of missing out but they also get the trust factor built because other people have taken the leap and they get to see their results real time now are you also teaching people like you've got these classes you've got these courses mm -hmm. are you teaching them to kind of replicate some of what you're doing is that part of how you your business runs to some extent, I mean, a lot of businesses follow the same format. So I'm corporate trained. This is exactly what I used to do for Fortune 500 companies and multi-billion dollar corporations uh, in my previous life. Now I just get to do it for the everyday entrepreneur. Now, I'm a really big believer in I don't want a million little Nicoles running out there. Everyone has their own gifts to bring to the table. So I get to show people how to leverage these strategies within their own businesses. So even if you are a uh, dog wash owner and you want to wash dogs live, and then send people to your site to go book appointments right away, you can do that. You know, you can leverage live streaming to build your business. So uh, these tactics and these strategies that I share with their students actually transcend from product and service-based businesses and outside of the realm of online marketing. So that's interesting because that was my next question. It's like these kind of things feel great for uh, informational products, but I definitely have worked with a number of people who like, whether they're stuck or not stuck, Sometimes they're stuck because there's a ceiling. There's only so mm -hmm. many hours in the day. They're constantly trading hours for dollars and they're looking for new ways of reaching and helping other people and of course creating more monetization opportunities. So it sounds like some of these techniques could be used for a brick and mortar store. You might just have to rethink how you're actually uh, shaping your products and services. Absolutely. So one of the things I love to share is uh, if you are running a coffee shop, do a coffee break where you pop in during your lunch break and you talk about what's happening in the business that day uh, and build the relationship that way and tell people where you're located and that they can come in during coffee break to to get like the 15 percent discount if you come in within the hour after a coffee break or you are a baker, you know, pop on your camera. It's right on your phone. Set up a tripod while you're making your, you know, famous dessert or you're working on piping and decorating a cake and just talk to the audience as you're going through that process. You've done it a million times and these people are seeing it for the first time. And then when you're done, tell them more about where they can find you and where they can book your services. It isn't always about stopping everything and creating the perfect marketing moment. Sometimes it's about just getting real and bringing people into a portion of your day. And that alone can build a relationship and encourage them them to buy from you. So that's really interesting. And I'm sure that there are people out there, you know, I'm, I'm also thinking to myself and I'm like, is my job interesting enough that other people would <laughs> sure. really want to watch me do a video on how to do a podcast, but who knows, maybe I should have been live streaming this entire interview. Oh, maybe. <laughs> if we have <laughs> you on again, we'll do that idea. for sure. You should. Uh, so you started out, you've got this very engaging personality and I'm just wondering though, for the people out there who might be wallflowers, you know, how do you know you start that first video yeah. you, nobody shows up like <laughs> what are you doing to get those first few people so you can really have an audience to engage so that is always where people are struggling. They're like, gosh, it's just weird because I feel like I'm just doing it by myself. And we have to look back on, you know, where marketing all started, right? So in the YouTube world online, you were filming videos and it, there wasn't live engagement. So we, we've only started getting used to that. I mean, people would put out videos for, for years before they really had any traction. All it takes is one big video. So uh, remembering to be excellent whenever you're on air matters, especially if you're in the live world. So you might do a video um, you know, I've had three viral videos in the past four months and each of those videos, when I shot them live, they all started as live videos on Instagram live. Um, I probably had anywhere between, I would say 40 to a hundred people watching and each one has garnered, you know, well over 5 million and one of them has 20 million. So you Can just you never, share with us, what were the topics? I'm just kind of curious about what oh, were the sure, topics of those sure, videos. Sure. 
So, uh, and of course, because that's how viral videos work, none of them were me showcasing, you know, beautiful business brilliance with perfect hair and perfect outfits. That was never the case. Of course, there were videos where I was uh, just waking up and running my kid out to a bus stop, you know, in the middle of my entrepreneurial workday and popping on to just check in with my community and say, hey, guys, just giving you a real life look at what it's like to be a mom running a business from home. And I got to get out to the bus and I'm, you know, uncomfortable and I look terrible. And these moms are going to be like, what's wrong with you? You know, and and I shared that I just went live and I shared that moment. And uh, that was it just it ended up going everywhere and going viral. And uh, surely that wasn't some fancy, you know, pre-manufactured, beautiful HD broadcast with a gorgeous background. You know, so I think that taking some of the heat off of ourselves to curate every single marketing moment um, will allow you to actually step into your greatness and showcase the very thing that people are going to love about you is that, you know, you're the baker that curses while making your cakes or you're the, you know, the mom that stops and prays over her kids before dinner. You know, I mean, whatever it is that is authentically you, that's the thing that's going to make your audience find you, trust you and ultimately pay you. So you mentioned that you did these on Instagram live. Um, Do you have a platform that you're, oh, is it, is it Instagram live or are you playing around with different platforms? Have you seen different results on each one? So my tactic is actually live streaming in general works great for me. Uh, What I've been doing, though, is I designate each platform for that audience experience. So if I'm getting onto Facebook Live, Facebook Live has an older demographic. So it gears to people who are older who tend to have more discretionary income and are also uh, they have a longer attention span and they're willing to uh, dive deep a little bit more, engage a little bit better. So I teach on Facebook Live. If If you see me on there, odds are you'll get something more serious, something more um more thought out something a little bit more professional looking uh if i'm hopping onto instagram live it's a younger demographic and they uh tend to want snippets i usually won't be on there for more than five minutes and it really is just popping on and hanging out with people uh you're gonna get uh still things that are in the moment so if i'm on location at an event or a speaking engagement you might get a quick pop-up there now if i'm hopping onto periscope live which is a uh, broadcast to twitter you're gonna get behind the scenes looks at like my family so that'll be me with my family family, you know, out at an event or at home or something funny that my husband's doing, uh, things like that. So people know that they can find me going live in different areas uh, because that's kind of what those demographics seem to appreciate the most. So I, I maximize the experience and still leverage my skills with live streaming. And these are just kind of as you spend more time on each one of these platforms, you've decided this is how I want to represent myself on these individual platforms because of the audience that's there. Totally. And uh, of course, some of that is based on the demographic right out of the gate. So if you're someone who uh, is, you know, talking about knitting and, you know, you also talk about like senior care, you probably don't want to do that on Snapchat because <laughs> it may right. not work out so well. Now, are you able to, sh- I mean, on Facebook, I, I often am on Facebook on my desktop, although I, I definitely use my phone as well. Um, that's easy to get somebody over to a landing page. On Instagram Live and Periscope, like, is it easy to share links and drive people uh, to an opt-in page. I'm assuming that we're still ta- like everything's mobile. Sure. So one of the things that you can do is if you have over 10,000 followers on Instagram, which I know is a, is a high number for some, but if you have over 10,000 using Instagram stories and live now, you can actually integrate a swipe up feature that takes you directly to the page. So uh, it is possible to create links that people can go to. What I've used from the very beginning on live streaming that works on any platform is creating a vanity URL. So I will buy something as simple as slayerscope.com, which will be be a something easy to say, easy to spell, where people will know, hey, I can go there right now in order to to find the thing she's talking about. So um, I have a training called the customer map. So if I'm on there talking about something on any of my live streaming platforms where a link isn't readily available to click, I will tell people to go to the customer map.com. They can type that in very easily and go right there and get what they need from that landing page or checkout page. Awesome. Now, um, Are you seeing, like getting back to the whole monetization thing, are you seeing other people who you feel are continually making mistakes? What are the mistakes that we should be avoiding as we try and get better about monetizing our time and our services? Yes. So the mistake that I see happening overwhelmingly that um, just truly, when I look at it, I'm like, gosh, this is such an easy fix that would would result in 
in either better traction, better results from your audience or more money uh, is this is getting caught up in the content. So content really matters. Consistency matters. But if you're creating content for the sake of being a creator without having any intention behind where you're going to send them or the experience they need, not only are you short selling yourself in terms of making money, but you're also not serving your audience as completely as you could. So I'll see people who are on Instagram and will have these beautifully curated pages with gorgeous flat lays and terrific lighting. And I mean, you can tell they really have put a lot of creative work into into providing an experience that people are engaging with and they love and they have followers. But at no point are they asking them, hey, if you'd like to learn more from this experience or buy these items or, you know, um, learn how to build an Instagram page that looks like this, go here. And people want that. You know, they're saying that in the comments. They're engaging with you. I mean, they're showing up for you. And and part of our obligations as people who are givers, because entrepreneurs are givers, uh, this this world is not fun. <laughs> it's, not, it's not always fun. I should say it's hard work. So by nature, we're in it to try to improve things. And you better believe that if you want to improve things and get paid while you do that, you've got to have a place to send them. So it's worth putting in the time and investment to create a product or an experience on the back end that as you're doing this, this creative content, you have a place to send people. Awesome. Uh, this has been great. Uh, I know we've talked about a couple of the places that you are busy online, uh, but where can we send people? I would love for people to head over to NicoleWalters.tv. If you head over there, you can find lots more about my courses, my opportunities. Uh, 1K One Day Academy is my wildly popular course. It's sold out in as little as four minutes. And uh, in this course, it teaches you all about how to get started monetizing, plug in the foundations uh, with some things like setting up your LLC, setting up your DBA, getting official, uh, knowing how to do things the right way in the right order. So uh, 1K One Day will be opening soon. And if you head over to NicoleWalters.tv or 1KOneDay.com, you can learn more. Awesome. Nicole, thank you so much for sharing your expertise and your energy. And you are fancy. Don't let anybody oh, tell you differently. Thank you so much, Rich. You're the absolute best. I appreciate you. Talk to you soon. If you're a first time listener to this podcast, A, welcome. And B, did you know we do a full transcript for every show? That's right. You can go read through the entire transcript if you missed anything, if you just want to get something. And all of the show notes and all of the links that Nicole shared with us are all available. Just head on over to theagentsofchange.com slash 240. That's theagentsofchange.com slash 240. Also, if you're a first-time listener, you know you can subscribe to this, right? It's almost like magic. You can head on over to iTunes or Stitcher Radio or Spotify or whatever your favorite uh, podcast app is and just find us, the Agents of Change, and click on that subscribe button. And sure enough, every time we have a new show, it's going to drop right into your favorite device. And while you're over there at iTunes, why not leave us a review? If you go to theagentsofchange.com slash iTunes, it'll lead you right there. Very easy to leave us a review. Let us know what you think. Feel free to write something. Tell us the kind of things that you're enjoying and kind of the things you'd like to see more of. Well, that's all the content we have for this week. I hope you learned something new, and I'll talk to you again in seven. Tune in next week when we continue our battle to subdue search, solve social media, and master mobile marketing.